Uh, my name is George D'Angelo. I'm with Vital Communications. Uh, we're the company that uh, performed the revaluation. Uh, basically, the uh, the revaluation was started a couple years ago. Uh, we had to uh, should have been completed the prior year uh, because of Sandy. It was extended for a year. Uh, the purpose of the revaluation was to uh, set the assessments. Uh, within the city of Brigantine at 100% of market value, which I believe we did achieve. Uh, the uh, final tax book was filed. Uh, the figures were reviewed by the county uh, tax board and the county tax administrator uh, certified the book. I believe the, the ratio of value actually came in at 98% and change of market value. Uh, I know we did have uh, informal hearings where we did send notices to property owners. We had about, a, uh, about an 8 percent response of people come into the informal hearings to discuss their assessments uh, prior to them being finalized. Uh, we just completed the tax appeals in the city of Brigantine. I know for the last, uh, I think for about the last five years, the, City of Brigantine had between 1,200 and 1,500 tax appeals every year. Uh, I believe last year they had a little over 1,400 tax appeals. Uh, this year, with the revaluation uh, going into effect, uh, there was a total of 217 tax appeals, which is a little less than 2 percent of the total taxable properties in the city, which kind of indicates to me that most people felt that their assessments were a reasonable representation of the market value. Uh, at this point, if anybody has any questions uh, regarding the, the revaluation, I'd be glad to answer them, either the public or council. George, you may want to, um, one of the questions that, that I'm consistently asked for, by the people um, whose taxes went up is the impact of having done the tax appeals over a period of years and then the new rate on the new value, and I'm sure other members of council have had similar questions. Yeah, well, basically, everything is budget driven. The <coughs> excuse me, the municipality has their own budget. You have the county. You've got a regional school, district school, open space tax. Uh, so there's a lot of different components in there, and basically. All those budgets are added up and the value of the town divided into that to come up with the tax rate. And basically, the uh, tax rate was uh, computed on an assessment of, of about $4.1 billion prior to the revaluation. At the conclusion of the revaluation, we had determined the entire value of the city was about $3.1 billion. So losing that $1 billion in rateable because the budget dollars aren't going down, the tax rate is going to have to go up to make up that difference to generate the same dollars. And I believe we did, uh, I think, what was the tax rate last year, about $1.30? No. No. 1.308. 1.308. Yeah. You know, we had told people uh, informally during the hearings that based on the current year's budget, which would have been last year's budget, uh, we thought the tax rate would probably be raised to about a dollar and sixty cents. So those people that did come into the informal reviews did know that the tax rate was going up. But once again, that was based on the new rateable and generating dollars for last year's budget, because that's a known amount. We don't know what the budgets for this year were going to be. So that gave them a level base of comparison at their taxes before the revaluation and after the revaluation. George, um, if you and just to cover this, because I've had these questions as well. Sure. People um, who came in for the informal meetings or um, perhaps they didn't come in for the informal meetings, I should say, and did not appeal this year, the time frame for appealing would be April of next year. That's so correct. That, I think that is something that, that um, once the whole tax bill came out, the impact of the entire 
uh, change is sure. is what and is dri driving a lot of the questions. Yeah, and, when, and once again, Mayor, the uh, years ago the uh, the statutory date for filing tax appeals was August fifteenth, which was after the tax bills went out, and I believe the county boards of taxation felt that people were appealing their taxes rather their in rather than their assessment. What they have to do is peel their assessment and prove that the value is incorrect by using comparable sales and, and that sort of thing. So what they did is they changed the filing date to April 1st. Uh, if you're doing a revaluation, it's extended until May 1st, but for next year it'll be April 1st. And I believe the reason they did that is to keep the focus on the tax assessment and whether that was a reasonable uh, indication of the market value of their property rather than appealing their taxes because they thought they were paying too much in taxes. But at this point in time, anyone who is dissatisfied with their uh, tax assessment would have to appeal their tax assessment next year, and they would have until uh, April 1st of next year to file the appeal. Great. George? Any additional questions by council members before I open it up to the public? George, I have a few questions. Several people have approached me about the value of their land. And um, can you explain how the assessment was decided on the land on the island? Yeah, basically, uh, if we have vacant land sales, we'll take a look at those. Uh, we'll, we're focusing basically on arm's length transactions between willing buyer and willing seller, uh, neither party being under any duress. Uh, in the absence of vacant land sales, we look at the sales of improved properties, like those properties with dwellings, and try to determine what the value of the dwelling is, and whatever value would be left over would be the residual value of the land. In other words, if a property sells for a million dollars and we determine the value of the improvements are about a half a million, the residual half a million left over would be the value of the land. Okay, I guess my question is now that people have their preliminary bills and they're able to go and compare it to other assessments on the island, there's questions about the, their land value. Um, is it consistent? Has it been checked that property is all along a certain area, say the they, bay, they the should ocean? Be, yeah, should they, they be consistent if it's the same size property? They should be consistent if they're the same size in the same neighborhood under the same factors. And yeah. if it's not, what, what would what would uh, you if recommend? If they think it's not, uh, my suggestion would be to contact the tax assessor's office to review it. And we'll assist her with any kind of review that she needs. Yes. In, in the event um, a property is purchased with a dwelling and then the dwelling is uh, demolished, does that whole price of the sale then become the new land value? Well, no, it can't be because right, if you're talking about right now, no, because in, in New Jersey it's, it, it's spot assessing. You can't go in based on one sale and change the value of one assessment based on a sale. Like if, if people can, in California, the law is that way. If you come in and buy a house, they're going to change your assessment to match the purchase price of the house. Right now, all these assessments are set. So a purchase right now is not going to change your assessment. Right now, the only way an assessment can be changed is by a review by the tax assessor. If she chooses to change it before she files the final tax book, for next year's taxes, or if people file a tax appeal. That's the only way the assessment can be legally changed. George, if I could, um, tell me if I'm wrong about this. I think it's a, a point that, that really should be put out there so that people understand. In your firm's job of trying to evaluate these properties and to set them at market value, your goal is to get them at 100% of current market value, right? Yeah. And as you indicated, you know, based on the county's view, you came very close. Yes. 98 and change. In that process, you don't give any weight to the, the history, if you will, of the assessments or the appeals or non, non appeals of any given property. Your goal is to find the market value at that point in time, right? Yes. We, we come in from scratch and 
we do the job and we put on the values that we think are appropriate. We don't even have any access to prior year tax appeals or prior histories on the property. Uh, we come in and value them at what we feel is appropriate. I understand some properties have been appealed in the past. Some properties have been appealed every year for three or four years. Mm -hmm. But we kind of really disregard that. Right. So basically you came to a, with a clean slate, trying to determine what was the market value of each property to get it as close to 100 percent as you could. That's correct. And one other thing um, that I think sometimes gets a little confused, the allocation of the overall assessment for an improved property between land and the improvements, it's, that's not really binding in any sense, right? The, the no, assessor it, makes their best uh, judgment. No, in fact, uh, the, the, there's, there's case law in New Jersey, and it follows through the tax board and down to the county board of taxation. You, you can't appeal your land value. If it's an improved property, if it's got a dwelling, you can't just appeal your land value. You can't just appeal your building value. You have to appeal the total value and prove the market value of the total value. Uh, in New Jersey, actually, the assessing is considered to be uh, an administrative function rather than an evaluation function. If you had a property that was uh, assessed at $300,000, it, it doesn't matter if the land is 100 and the building is 200 or vice versa. What has to be appealed is the total value, which would be the $300,000. Yeah. One other thing just occurred to me. Um, again, because I've, I've heard some people who seemed a little unclear in this. As you did, as your firm did the reval, that is entirely an independent professional undertaking by your firm, right? That's not something the council has any input into? Ha or the manager. Absolutely. Uh, council has no input into it. Uh, and I can, I can say right now, Nobody on council has questioned me about any specific values or, or any specific properties or any specific owners. We're completely independent. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't know who's a Republican here, who's a Democrat here. It doesn't make any difference. We you stay in. a little later. You, you, you <laughs> stay a little later, you'll find out. <laughs> now, we, 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 just, we, we, we are independent, and we try to do a fair value, and, and that reflects on us. And, and, and that's why we, I, I was really gratified when we had such a few amount of tax appeals uh, because we have to defend the tax appeals this year. We have to defend the tax appeals next year. That's a no additional charge to the city. That's already in our contract. And I don't want to have to defend a value that's capricious or arbitrary or wasn't come up with on a reasonable basis. So. Uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with the outcome of the job here. Uh, George, I have a question uh, based yeah. on a comment that you made. You said that if an individual taxpayer felt that his assessment um, was not right, that he could go to the tax, our tax assessor. Um, if she were to agree with him that something wasn't right, would, would that adjustment be made for 2015, not 2014? It would be made for the next tax year, not okay. this tax that year. That was my question because yes. that, that, is, that is a question I'm yeah, getting as well. Like I said, at this point, it's, it's really too late for anybody to get individual relief now because the appeal process, the filing date is passed and the appeals are over. Thank you. George, I have a question. Of the 217 people that appealed, obviously these people feel that their assessment was incorrect. Were any of these people contacted before actually going through the entire appeal process in order to settle with them on a lesser amount? In other words, if they appealed, I'm sure that you looked at the data, the tax assessor looked at the data. Were there any that you said, gee, this guy's right and we ought to lower it by X? And I'm asking because in years past, uh, there were phone calls from the assessor or the attorney to some people who had appealed saying, you know, we agree with you partially and we're willing to decrease your assessment from 400000 to 370000 Was that 
part of the process in the appeals process this year were any people contacted with an offer if they appealed? Yes, they were. Yeah, we had reviewed some of the properties, uh, myself and the assessor, and in some of the areas where we thought there was some room to make an adjustment, we contacted the property owners prior to them going to the hearing. In some cases, we were unable to get them prior to going to the hearing, but we did make an offer at the table. Great. Can you, can you again, get... it's a little bit of... It's, it's, it's a little bit of an informal process. Can you put a value on the average appeal change? Of the 217, what was the average? I, I don't know. Uh, all the judgments will be returned to the tax assessor's office by the County Board of Taxation and I believe that'll be done, I'm going to say in about, in about a month. I'm going to say in about four or five weeks. They will be sent to the assessor's office, and she'll be able to see what the total loss and rateable was as a result of the hearings. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any, any other members of council with questions? Yeah, I have two more questions. And um, these questions are coming up because taxpayers have approached me. Sure. So now I'm asking on their behalf. Um, for example, on Ocean Avenue along the ocean. If you have a land value on the ocean that's less than the land value across the street from the ocean, how do you explain that to a taxpayer? I don't know how I'd explain that unless I saw the individual properties. Okay. Unless there's a great deal in variation in their size, the one on the ocean should be assessed higher. So if there's a discrepancy, that should be brought to the assessor's attention. And would that be fixed immediately and for 2014 if there's no. an obvious mistake? No. Thank you. Okay, any other questions by council members? You, Ms. McClay, you said you had two questions. Do you yes. have another? Uh, the other question is similar situation. Um, property on the bay? versus a property in the A zone. You would think that a bayfront property, I would think that the bayfront property wouldn't have a higher, as, higher are the, as well unless there's a big variation in the size. Okay. These are the questions and these are the problems so I'm saying. Again, if there's a couple isolated circumstances like that, you should get the property you encourage the property owners to contact the assessor's office. And, and George, regarding condo condo properties where units are the same um, square footage, yet apparently in some situations there's been a pretty large divergence in the uh, assessments. The young, if the buildings are, if the units are about the same size, the only thing that I could suggest would be, uh, that would account for divergence would be either uh, they might be a, a different story height, there might be a different view factor, depending on if these are you know, mm -hmm. multi-units, multi-story, that could be okay. a factor in that. It should be a factor in that. So you're saying this cannot be corrected immediately if there's a problem with the value of the land? No, it can. I, I don't believe it can be legally done. This year? For this, this year. year. Yeah. This year. There cannot be an adjustment for the next quarter. I don't believe so, no. Now, is that by statute or just by practice? Pardon? Is that by statute or by practice? I believe it's by statute. You may want to check with the assessor's office to double check, but it's it's not by practice. Thank it you. It will be by statute. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Okay, at this time I'm going to open a meeting up uh, if anyone has a question for George. If you would, please use the microphone. You have to identify yourself for the record. George, you want to sit down, you can use that mic. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Jim Conti, 108 North Roosevelt. Uh, when you're assessing the property, you're using uh, comps in the area? Yes. Okay, what I would like to understand is, uh, let's take a scenario. A, a house has been lifted in the area. B, a house has to be lifted and hasn't been lifted yet. C, a house has it, doesn't have to be lifted. How do you come up, okay, and they go for, and they're on, on the market. How do you figure this out? 
because the person lifted, lifted the house, his price should be more than the person didn't lift it yet. <coughs> and the person that don't have to lift the house, how do you come up with the figure? In other words, when you go out and assess a property, how do you know, for instance, 108 Roosevelt doesn't have to be lifted and, say, 208 Roosevelt had to be lifted? Well, how do you assess the property? As, as, as far as I know, the, the tax assessor's office uh, was in pretty close contact with the building inspector's office, and I believe any properties that were deemed to be over 50% uh, damage uh, by Sandy uh, that had to be lifted, uh, we did give them uh, a subjective adjustment. I think we reduced them uh, uh, by at least $25,000. And once again, I believe they don't have to be raised for three years. I think there's a three-year period on that. So we did try to take that into consideration. Uh, one of the problems, and, and we did discuss with, uh, with council before, was trying to, uh, I know the city really wanted to get this revaluation done and eliminate tax appeals and bring the values up to 100%. I think we were pretty successful in doing that. Uh, but the situation is, since Sandy, and our values are as of October 1st uh, of the pre-tax year. So they're October 1st out of 2013. Uh, you really had, between Sandy and that October 1st date, you really had a small window for sampling of sales. To be honest, I would have preferred to get another year extension. But that wasn't in the, in the best interest of the municipality. I would, as an appraiser, I'm just looking for another longer period of time to get a larger sampling of sales. Because the larger sampling of sales I have, the, the more I have to hang my hat on to determine what the fair values are. But we did try to take that into consideration okay, and, and be fair with people and check with the construction. Yes, yeah, because that was my point. Like, if, for instance, where I live, the guy across the street lifted his house, and I don't lift mine, okay. I don't have to lift mine, you would sit there and say, well, his insurance is cheaper, so, you know, his price would be a and, lot more than, and, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, you, and, how that works. And, and not everyone who had Sandy damage filed a report with the tax assessor's office. Where there was a report filed with the tax assessor's office, the assessor was able to look at it. Uh, for people who came into their informal hearings, even if they hadn't filed a report, if they brought in some pictures and gave us some information, we were able to make an adjustment at that time in, at the informal hearing. So we have tried to take all that into consideration. Okay, great. Thanks for your help. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Any other uh, questions for uh, George from Vital. John? John Pucci, 100 Sharon Square. Could you just basically explain, I, I've heard some people ask about the comps, the comps that you use during your evaluation and maybe other comps that they may have, they may have heard about but were invalid for the process, i.e., uh, foreclosures or quick sales, and, and why they were not be able to use be able to use in your process of evaluation. Yeah, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, typically we don't consider uh, foreclosures or bank sales <coughs> uh, or short sales. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be using arm's length transactions. It's a willing buyer, or a willing seller. Uh, neither party under any compulsion to sell. Uh, and the, the County Board of Taxation generally uh, adheres to that as well, although they may give some consideration to other sales that are considered non-usable, such as an estate sale, which we believe represents the low end of the market range. But a lot of times they are listed on, uh, listed on the MLS uh, and are exposed on the market as a typical house would. So it may reflect the value. But, you know, our position is that we have enough sales that are arm's length transactions, uh, and those sales were on the market exposed to the public at the same time as the short sales and the bank sales. So any effect those short sales and bank sales had on the arm's length transactions 
that's already reflected in the arm's length transactions. So that's why we utilize those. Uh, typically, that's what the County Board of Taxation will do as well, although they may put some weight on some of the non-usable sales. Anyone else from the public on the uh, reavail? Yes, Chair. Joe Haran, 801 Bayshore. I'm curious, what percentage of properties got a reduction in assessments? Got a reduction in assessment? You mean as a result reduction. of the revaluation? Well, you mean a, re a reduction in their assessment as a, you mean their assessment before the revaluation and, yeah. the, and after the revaluation? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I substantial amount of properties uh, <clears throat> looks like almost and I'm not sure how current this is I would say almost 8,000 how many? almost 8,000 8,000? yeah properties that we yeah. have and there's about a, there's a total of about uh, about 8,900 that are taxable. Now, I'm, I'm curious because I got a, a minor reduction in my assessment and a 27% increase in my taxes. How that happen? Well, once again, a, a revaluation is really revenue neutral. We're just coming up with what we feel is the market value of the properties. Everything else is, is budget <coughs> In other words, if, if you have to generate dollars, if the assessments are cut in half, you have to double the tax rate to generate the I understand that, but I'm assuming from that number you just told me 8,000 people got a reduction. That must have been pretty substantial to have other people get 27 and 30 percent increases in taxes. Well, they all got, of those that got reductions, some might have been a minor reduction like your own, and some might have been a much larger reduction. It's dependent on what the old assessments were. And once again, the, the, this was a town that was a, a little bit of, the, of on a difficult basis to value because typically assessments are pretty uniform throughout the municipality. And if we go into a municipality that hasn't been revalued in maybe 15 years, you know, in general, we can say, oh, these assessments are going to go up 50 percent, or we're going to go up 60 percent, as a generality. Uh, in Brigantine, there's been so many appeals filed over so many years, so many multiple appeals filed on so many properties, there is there's actually almost no rhyme or reason to some of the assessments. Well, so, I appealed again, the assessment with you people. And I gave comps that justified a more substantial reduction. Was and this people arbitrarily said, we're happy with the number we have. You know? so there was no, no place to uh, well, adjudicate you know, that. Unfortunately, that, that was our opinion of value. I don't know if you filed an appeal to the county board or not. Well, you, you gave people the opportunity to appeal, but then you say to them, we're happy with what we, we come up with. And sometimes so who do you are. go to then? And, and sometimes we are. Just no, we have to go to the state. Huh? Appeal doesn't mean they're going to get a reduction. Yeah. We try to do what's reasonable and fair. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Mrs. Phillips. Ann H. Phillips, 308 27th Street. Um, that gentleman asked, I believe, percentage of the properties which received a reduction in their assessment. And you said 8,000? About, about 8,000. We only have 8,000 in some properties, don't we? Uh, you've got 8,894 taxable properties. And you're saying 8,000 got a reduction in their assessments and their taxes? No, no. I said they got a reduction in their assessment. The assessment is not the tax. No, I understand that. But I just wanted to know, um, and how about the taxes? Do you know how, maybe I should ask the council, because this has been asked of me. 
what, um, in general, I know it's not it's precise, but there is, um, people say one third went up, so one third remained the same, blah, blah, blah. But are those correct or approximate in terms of what happened based on this reval? We haven't seen the aggregate numbers that I have, and I just have looked at the, like you did, the mm -hmm. anecdotal. Yeah. And it depends on the property. Um, I've talked to a number of people. It depends on a number of factors um, that have occurred either recently or if it's been over a series of years that people have done multiple tax appeals. And, you know, the problem you run into is, is twofold. One is the, um, you know, we, we lost a little over a billion dollars in rateables. So obviously a lot of people got reductions. Um, with that, the number, if it's off by the overall number, was about 24% reduction in value. If your value went down more than that, you probably saw a reduction. If it, if it didn't go down as much, you may, may have seen an increase. Did and the gentleman say reduction in assessments or reduction in taxes? He, his, his assessment went down a, a little bit. And his taxes went up. It went up. 27%. And his question was, how many people actually got a reduction in their assessment? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That was correct. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying that 8,000 out of 8,600 properties got a reduction in the assessment? Yes, ma'am. That leaves the rest of us who got I don't an know increase. Whether, no. and it, maybe Dana knows the answer, or, or Jennifer, how many people actually saw a tax increase? We don't, yeah, we don't know the answer to that question. Dana had contacted the auditor, and there's no way for us really to know if we, unless we go through our database. But what you said is correct. Unless people were seeing a decrease in their assessed value of at least 24 percent, their taxes are going to remain the same or go up. It would have to be a reduction over 24 percent in assessed valuation for anyone to see a tax decrease. Okay, so wait a minute. You're saying that 8,000 properties saw a reduction in their assessments. That's what, that's what Out of 80, 8,600, 8, 8,600, yeah. whatever. Right. That's a tremendous number. I mean, a few of us got increases. Um, so we, we're in a definite minority here in terms of um, increase in assessments. And of course, most, then, most of the, a lot of the assessments went down, but like the gentleman who spoke before you, if his assessment only went down a little bit, his taxes would still go up. Yeah, I can, yeah, I'm not, the yeah. between the assessment, talking about reducing assessment and reducing taxes. I'm just amazed that so many people, so many properties got a reduction in the assessment, an overwhelming percentage. I wasn't aware of that. Well, so, actually, the, the math is kind of simple and even kind of matches up with that 24 percent because uh, the County Board of Taxation, uh, the year before the revaluation was implemented, the County Board of Taxation had calculated that the average assessments in the uh, city of Brigantine were at 123% of market value. They were, they were assessed in excess. Oh, yeah, I experienced value. that. I appealed five times. <laughs> so, um, I, but I'm still amazed that there were so many properties that did actually get a reduction. Thank you. So that's the figure. Dana, do you, do you know also the... Um the rate, of the abstract of rateables this year that came through, where are we at 100 percent, or are we a little above that, or? I don't have access to the abstract, but I, I believe we're we're 98 and change. So we're we're right about where we should be. Yes, you are. Okay. Which does help us, um, in case people don't understand, with our county taxes. When we were over that amount, um, Brigantine was paying more of their share towards the county taxes than other municipalities that had assessments that were too low at the time. Like it's because the county's got a mathematical formula to, to adjust up to 100%, and actually it's uh, not a fair way. You actually pay more. Okay, any other questions from the public? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi. Fred Hess, number 28, Gold Cove. My question is regarding, if I understood correctly, the fact that nothing can be changed for the current tax year. I believe that's correct, okay. yes. I can only tell you from anecdotal experience, several years ago, there was an out-and-out -out mathematical error made due to the size of our property. I talked to the, at the time, uh, city manager, 
who ended up conceding that there was an error, whether it was a typographical error or whatever, but the tax was adjusted for the current year because they overestimated, the, they overmeasured the size of the property. Are we saying that even if there's an error that's been made, not a difference of opinion, but an error that's been made, that the city would acknowledge that the resident is still responsible for paying the higher tax? I, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that's the case, but you would probably be able to check with the but assessor's office. I, I thought you just said before, though, that the tax assessor could make an adjustment in, in an instance like that. The tax assessor can make an adjustment prior to the filing of the final tax book for next year. Mm -hmm. So this way, if that was the case, that would be something that could be done by the assessor's office without the property owner having to go through the time and the expense of filing a tax appeal to get it corrected. He could go through the assessor's office and have that corrected before next year's tax book is filed. I would, I would just encourage people to check the actual measurements of their property and make sure that due to an error, I'm not saying anybody did it on purpose, obviously, but their errors can be made and the error could result in higher taxes for somebody. So, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Okay, any other uh, questions from the public? All right, I'm going to close the, the public portion. Um, any additional questions uh, from council members for George from Vital? George, when you did the, the assessments back at that time, wasn't the tax sales or sheriff sales or short sales, wasn't that the real market, though? It was probably no. 90 no, we, we have it was enough. probably 90% of the market was now selling we do, the debt. We, have, we do have enough arms lens transactions, and, and that's what we utilize at the County Board of Taxation to defend the assessments. We didn't use any short sales. We didn't use any bank sales. Uh, we didn't use any But that was a real sales. market at that particular time, yeah. like it or not well, like it, but that, oh, that well, was sure the market. It has an effect on the market, but, but as I said... We use arms less transactions I understand what you're in the market saying. at the same point in time. So any deleterious effect that those properties being on the market at the same time competing with the arms length transactions, if that's pulling those values down for the arms length transactions, that's reflected in the market because they're in the same neighborhoods at the same exposure at point in time. Okay. George, I want to thank you for taking the time coming over and uh, you're very welcome. Thank you thank for you. being thank accessible. Um, any questions that, uh, once again, that members of the public have about their assessment or how the new rate is applied? Um, resources are here at City Hall. Uh, certainly, you can reach out to you can reach out to me or to one of your council members, but uh, we will refer you to the experts who are here in City Hall. I'll give you the information that I have. But um, how it's actually applied in this tax year is probably somewhat confusing as the rate has gone up um, significantly because the value went down. So it's, it's something that is, is a little bit confusing overall. But if you have any uh, further questions, don't hesitate to ask.